So here I'm going to be doing a video on how I make homemade french fries and chicken nuggets. Uh, it's one of the few things I can get Damien, my son, to uh, eat. Um, french fries are pretty self-explanatory, but I figured I'd show how I tend to cut them. Um, so I saved the last potato, just as an example here. You have no power over me. If you can hear the movie in the background, that's to entertain the uh, little monster. The, this recipe, basically, you can go off of however much you need, you know, for yourself, your family, whatever. Um, I also uh, make plenty to have leftovers, because it's something that I can kind of just heat up the next day and let him have for, like, lunch, dinner. Um, he tends to like to graze something I kind of let him munch on throughout the day. At least the potatoes. But you can also, I use a fryer. That's what I have. Um, it helps me avoid burning down the uh, house. Which, uh, as funny as that sounds, um, I'm being truthful. We, uh, my husband and I had a fire in here last time I tried to do this just heating up oil in a uh, pot so I mean you can do it that way my mom does it that way you just gotta be careful I had made the oil way too hot so something to be aware of so that's how I do my french fries um, and I'll show you how I add them to the fryer and the fryer that I'm using um, next I'm going to show you how I start to bread the chicken for the chicken nuggets and how I cut it so we'll be right back okay so I have about two chicken breasts worth right here um, came in a package that I got from Costco I get the uh, one that's got like eight packets each one with two chicken breasts in it it's usually plenty for me and Damien and my husband when he's home so um, I kind of go through, I look for any um, fat, um, cartilage, or whatever you want to call this uh, white stuff right here, and cut it off. Um, it's easier to make it into tenders um, than to do individual chicken nuggets or smaller nuggets. I mean, you can do either way. The cool thing about this recipe is it's pretty versatile in what you can do with it. So, um, let's see here. I just kind of cut it off. I try to get the, uh, the bloody parts off and just these bits. Um, my dad told me a, uh, way to dehydrate things using the oven, basically make jerky using the oven. I have yet to try it out, but when I do, if it works, I plan on taking all these little tidbits that are mostly just fat and stuff, and uh, making them into dog treats. That way I'm really not wasting anything uh, when it comes to cooking. So, which, you know, in this day and age, you know, treats are expensive, meat's expensive, so using everything that you can is important. Especially if you plan on trying to save money, which is my goal. Let me get rid of this right here. I'm very picky when it comes to my meat. You might, you know, not care so much about the fat. I just cannot stand biting down and getting a mouthful of fat. Or tough spots, so. Alright. Not 
too worried about that part. I usually try to get as much of the fat off of the main breast part and get it cleaned up as much as I can. And then what I'll do is I'll fillet it, which for anyone who's not familiar with what that is, I'll, uh, I'll be showing you how I do that. Learned it from my dad since I don't really like thick chunks of meat because it can be hard to get them cooked thoroughly. It works really well. It's very useful with these uh, thicker uh, chicken breasts. So basically what I do is uh, holding it down like this, take this, take your knife out the center of it. Now you gotta be very careful. Keep an eye on where the knife's going, but you just kind of start slicing it just straight through. It's not going to be perfect. I'm by no means an expert, and this is not a filleting knife. Um, but by making it thinner, it'll cook easier in the fryer. Now, I used to have to do these, I used to do them as chicken patties. And so I just do thin cuts of chicken and make chicken patties out of it. But um, then I had my son, and he really, to make it easier for him, it's easier to make them into little tenders. Which is what I try to do. Alright. So we just cut straight down like that. Try to get as close to it as I can so I don't waste anything. There we go. Oh. And these longer ones like this, I usually just cut down so they're smaller. This right here, this area, it always seems to be pretty heavy on like tendon and stuff, or I don't know what it is, but it's fat and a whole bunch of stuff that I don't really like biting into, so I always try and get that cut off. Here. There we go. Cut that off. And of course, you know, you're supposed to always cut away from you, which I, uh, doesn't feel natural sometimes with some of the cuts that I do. So if you're going to cut towards you, um, try and make sure you're careful when you do it. Obviously. And yeah, I am no, by no means an expert in cutting all this off and not wasting anything. But I hope Eventually, I'll become better at it. Alright, so do this again. I really do like these knives. 
when I was cutting through the potato with it, it was just, it was easy. It wasn't hard at all. And this isn't hard at all either. But uh, when I take the chicken out of the packages, I usually rinse the meat, and I will usually go through and rinse the meat after I get done cutting it as well, and then go into my next step where I uh, um, bread it and stuff. So I'm going to basically go and do that, and I'll come back when we're ready to bread. Okay, so I went ahead and set this all up, and this is where I'm going to put the breaded uh, chicken once I have it breaded. Uh, I will put a little bit of bread on the bottom, just because it helps it from sticking to the bottom and stuff. I've got my bowl that's got breading in it right here. I have my empty bowl where I'm going to put the eggs. And then right here I have my rinsed chicken. And just so you know, this is the breading that I use. The Progresso Italian breadcrumbs. Um, get some eggs here. Now since, what I usually do is I start out with two eggs. Um, if I need more than that, then I can always add more. What I do is I put it in this little bowl here and make sure that the egg is good. You can always end up having, depending upon where you get your eggs, partially fertilized or whatever, or they could be bad. So I just check, put it in this bowl. If it's good, I put it in another bowl. And that's what I do every time I use eggs for anything. Baking, um, just to make scrambled eggs in the morning, anything like that. I always do it one at a time in the one little bowl and then put it with the rest of whatever it is I'm making once I've made sure it's okay. Saves on ingredients because once you put one in there that's no good, it ruins everything it's touched and you gotta start all over. So we'll go ahead and just put that right there for now. You can see the light that's kind of going on and off in the dining room. That's my son playing with the light switch. But what I'll do is go ahead and hook these up real good. to get your fingers dirty. You can use the fork to try and uh, move it around and stuff, but it's it can be a real pain in the butt. I mean, you're already handling the meat with your hands to cut it, so doing it like this is whatever. So, I just toss it in there. I use my dry hand to help cover it up with breading so the breading doesn't stick to my hand. Try and press it on as much as you can. I usually flip it and then cover it again. Make sure it's on there nice and good. And there we go. I usually try to get. Oh, almost went and used the wrong hand for that. Um, get everything breaded and ready to go into the fryer and then start dealing with the fryer. Um, 
That way my attention isn't away from it. Because even though it's made for that, um, better be safe than sorry. So, that and these cook really fast in the uh, fryer. About two, three minutes. Since they are uh, raw and uh, not frozen. Um, I like doing it this way because I know that the quality of the chicken, I know that there isn't just a whole bunch of gristle in a bite. Um, and I like the spreading. It's not really spicy um, or anything. My son usually likes it, but sometimes he decides that, you know, he's just not going to eat anything I present him, no matter what it is through the day. He's a very picky and pain in the butt eater. He'll eat the french fries, which, you know, I guess that's something. Potatoes are actually really healthy for you, so... But the other thing is it's pretty cheap, you know, if you're doing it yourself, you can make as much as you want, you can make it as good as you want, you know, you can always alter the recipe, use a different uh, breading, double bread it if you want thicker breading, that type of thing. If you want them to be extra crispy, cook them longer. I suppose you can do that with frozen uh, chicken nuggets too, but I've tried breading these all sorts of different ways, even to the point of, you know, getting the egg on them and throwing them all in a Ziploc baggie and shaking it up. That is one of the most messiest and annoying ways to do it, and it doesn't even bread it all the way because the chicken will stick to itself with the egg and you still end up doing something like this. So. So I'm going to be breading all this chicken, and then when we come back, I will be showing you the fryer, and uh, give you a little rundown of it, how much it cost me to get, and uh, go from there, so. Okay, so, move this real quick. All right, so this is my fryer. It is a T-Fall Easy Clean Compact. It's got a pretty neat feature where once it's done, when you turn the thing over like this, it automatically filters and drains the oil into the um, bottom container here. And uh, then you can reuse your oil, which to me is really, really nice. It actually waits till it cools to a certain temperature before it even uh, goes down in there. Um, then you just uh, switch that over to get to the out box and you pull it out. And you can either leave it in here to store it or you can uh, do what I do. I put it in a different container, store it in the uh, pantry, clean this out. Um, I like to try and keep this as clean as possible. Um, I don't like a lot of that oil buildup that fryers can uh, develop if you don't keep them clean. I also um, always keep it unplugged, regardless, just because it's safer that way. I mean, it's got a little turn dial and everything, but uh, it just seems safer to keep it unplugged uh, when it's not in use. So, we'll plug it in. It's got a lid right here, little basket, 
the heating element right here, which comes out. This comes out, the tray comes out. In fact, everything except for the heating element is dishwasher safe, which is also uh, really, really nice. I usually rinse everything with uh, water, hot water, after it's drained and everything. Get most of the crusty stuff out of the bottom. Rinse it out real good, and then I'll put it in the dishwasher and let it run. Um, fully sanitize everything with the heating element, just run hot water over it, and then I wipe it down with a paper towel because you're not supposed to use soap on uh, that part. So, what I do, oh, and this whole thing costs $79.95 at Walmart. Um, out of all the fryers there, because it had the tray at the bottom, so you could easily reuse your your oil and stuff, it seemed like the best deal. Um, so that's why we went with this one. It's got a minimum and maximum fill line on the inside here. Which, let's see here. Not sure if you can read it on there or not but it's right right there um which I find handy now let's see if I can get this uh, to sit right again alright there we go so I take my oil and I just pour it in there I have yet to turn it on now this completely full fills it all the way up to the uh, the maximum, which is 1.8 liters or 1.8 quarts. Um, so I put that in there. Go ahead and cover this up. I cook both the chicken tenders and the french fries at 356. When I cook them, I alternate between chicken tenders and french fries. And, uh, Um, I try to go ahead I get the french fries cut up first so that they can drain and get as small of amount of water or will have a sm the smallest amount of water as uh, possible and that is because you do not want to have a whole lot of water going into your oil otherwise it will boil over and that is how you can end up with fires also, you want to introduce everything to the fryer rather slowly. If you introduce it to the fryer once the hot, the oil is hot, it's uh, it's not gonna go over very well. So, let me put this on pause real quick. I'll just okay. So, something to note with this particular setup that I have going. The uh, light that indicates it's on and stuff, um, once you turn it to start heating, it goes off once it's reached its temperature. So that's pretty nice. Um, with french fries, I just add a few of these into the basket here. I've made sure that they're not covered in uh, water. And I don't add too, too many, otherwise it's going to be, it's not going to fully get covered. I move the basket around, make sure they're not stuck to each other. And then I cover it up. Now with the french fries, um, usually you can tell that they're done because they start floating up to the top. And then depending upon if you like them really crunchy, if you like them soft, you can judge um, how long you want to put them in there from looking at them. I usually like them soft, and I make them soft for the, the little man. Now I'm going to get a plate and set it off to the side. I do is I cover it with two layers um, of paper towels. 
that's to help soak up whatever oils on the uh, on the food once it comes out. Depending upon how much food, you may need more than one plate. You may need to replace the uh, paper towels, um, whatever suits you. So. It has a little fil filter thing there. Yeah, don't be an idiot like me. Put your hand in the steam. A uh, filter thing there, so the hot air comes through, but it keeps the oil inside still, so it's not popping all over the place. Yeah, I just had a very, uh... Let's see here. Okay, so I had to pause that for a little bit. We're still on the first batch of uh, french fries right now. They're gonna be done here soon. Uh, on a side note, I made cookies earlier today and they came out splendid. And uh, I did not video record that. I just uh, was not up to uh, doing all that earlier today, but I plan on doing a video tutorial on how I make the cookie batter that I use for all sorts of different cookies. So, take a look. They're starting to float towards the top, but they haven't browned at all. So I'm going to continue to cook for a little bit longer. And when I start doing the chicken tenders, I will be back. Alrighty. So. French fries are done, at least uh, to the point where I like them. I just make sure they get just a little bit brown. A little firm, but not too crunchy. It's also why I have them relatively thick. Try and let as much of the oil drain off of it as possible. I just take it over here, dump it boop, on my plate, and look. Nice, yummy french fries. And you can decide if you want to salt them or not. I usually add just a very little bit of salt. There. Now, chicken tenders are a little different. Whereas I put the french fries in the basket and then lowered the basket, the chicken tenders have to be lowered into the oil individually. You need to do it slowly, and the best bet is to use tongs to ensure your own safety. But you just uh, add them one at a time. Make sure that you don't splash them in there. You want to just start getting them into the oil and then let go. Bit. Make sure they don't get stuck on top of each other and they get fully covered by a little. With the chicken tenders, you're going to have a, a harder time fitting a whole bunch in, unlike the french fries. And that's just because they're slightly bigger. Um, When they stiffen or harden, you know, they take up more room, if you will. So we are going to let that cook for a little bit. Now, they don't take long to cook at all. Like I said, the french fries maybe took a little bit longer, but the chicken really doesn't take long at all. Um, I always like to cut one open just to make sure it's cooked all the way through. 
but we're cooking it at 356 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. Um, for it to be safe, I believe chicken is uh, usually needed at a temperature of 180 uh, Fahrenheit and 82 Celsius. So it's going into uh, oil that's almost twice the heat um, of what it needs to get up to. So getting up to temp isn't the worry here, especially if you're using room temperature foods. Um, What's the worry is overcooking and burning it, which I have done because they cook pretty quick. And I'm actually going to leave the camera on the full process here just so you can see how long it actually uh, can take to cook. And these you can make extra crispy if you really want by leaving them in longer. And kind of look through the little. Uh, mirror here, well not mirror, but window here. It's really not that useful. But you can kind of get an idea of the coloration that they're taking on. If you want to avoid opening the lid. so you can kind of see the coloration here. That right there, let's see where are we, right there, there, that's optimum, or optimum, or whatever you want to use for the term. That's usually the best coloration you want to go with. Um, but the more that you cook, the darker they're going to get, because the oil gets darker. But also, the longer you cook them, the darker they get. But this is about the uh, the coloration you want them to be at. Since we have more chicken than we do french fries at this point, I'm going to keep going on with the chicken. So, basically it's a rinse and repeat at that point. And, uh... I will come back once I have it all cooked up. There we go. That is everything. Of course, excluding the uh, small amount I gave my son to eat already, but french fries, chicken tenders, I'm going to end up bagging this and uh, saving it for little meals later on for the little man since it's one of the few things he'll eat and it's pretty healthy. I mean, for the most part. So, it's healthier than fast food chicken nuggets. But, uh, yeah. Pretty simple. And, uh, easy to do.